Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer. This video is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to teach you how to properly use object-oriented programming by building the game of chess. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. Object-oriented programming is a practice in which objects contain data as well as functionality. Typically, the functions inside of an object modify the data contained in that object. The best way, I believe, to learn a concept in programming is to build something using that concept. Designing the game of chess will allow us to cover a lot of concepts related to OOP, such as encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. In this video, we're going to design the cru most crucial part of the game, which is the board. So let's get into it. Okay, so the chess board has 64 squares. Each of those squares can either be light or dark. And those 64 squares are divided up into eight columns and eight rows. Okay, so what I have here is a class diagram where the top level class is going to be our board class, which is going to be composed of a list of squares. And then each square is going to have an, an enum for square color. And then it's also going to have a location. And then a location is also going to have a file. And then a file, or the location is also going to have a rank. So the file in this case is the column, and the rank is the row. Okay? So we're going to start off by creating the file, file and rank objects, then the location, and then we're going to create the square, square color, and then ultimately the board. Okay, so here I am in IntelliJ, and I'm just gonna start off by creating uh, a package. So I'm gonna say new Java package. I'm gonna call it com.chess and then dot squares. Okay, so this package is gonna contain all the logic related to squares. So I'm gonna create a new Java class called square. And then I'm also going to create a new Java class called square color. Awesome. Okay. So, um, and then I'm going to create another package uh, off of the chess package and call it common. And then inside of common, I'm going to create a new Java class called file. And then I'm also going to call create a new class called uh, location. Okay, now inside of the file class, I actually want to make this an enum. Okay, so an enum is I'm I'm just going to name it as A B C D E F G and H. Okay, so in chess, the files are are named with letters, and then the ra uh, ranks are named uh, with numbers. Okay, all right. So over inside of the location class. Um, we're going to actually uh, create two, two fields. They're going to be private, final, file, file, and then private, final, uh, integer, rank. Okay, so I have these as private and final values because the location, first of all, is never going to change. It's a fixed value on a board. And then I have it as private because I don't want uh, other classes to be able to access these fields directly outside of the location class. Okay, so it's yelling at me right now because you have to instantiate these values at uh, construction time uh, because they're final. So I'm going to create a constructor and then I'm just going to, so now I'm just going to uh, generate uh, some getters for these values because these values are never going to get set outside of construction time. So they're, they're basically a read only class. And then we're going to want to uh, implement the um, equals and hash code functions. What this will allow us to do is compare two locations to each other. So now let's jump over to square color. So square color is actually also going to be an enum. Okay. So and then in inside of this is just going to be light square and then dark square. It's pretty straightforward. All right. So now inside of the square class, this is where most of our square logic is going to be, okay? So a square is going to have a private, 
uh, final square color, square color, whoops, and then private final location, location. So remember, squares and locations don't change. Uh, locations within squares and colors within squares don't change, so we can mark those as final. Then we're also going to have um, uh, private boolean is occupied. So that means a piece uh, is on that particular square. Okay, And then we're going to create a constructor, public. So now we need to actually implement a function called reset. So public void reset. So reset is basically what the function that the game logic is going to call to reset this square to be uh, unoccupied. So basically, we're just going to say this dot is occupied is equal to false. All right. So you can imagine if there's a piece and it moves away from a square, then we want to call reset on a particular square, basically to say that there's no longer a piece here and that it's not occupied. Okay. And then we want to create some getter and setter methods. All right. And then uh, to help us out in debugging, we're just going to also generate uh, two string for all of the parameters. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new package. And we're going to call it board. And then inside a board, we're just going to have a class called board. All right. OK, so here we are in our board class. And a board just simply is a multidimensional array of squares. So we can write that as saying square uh, board squares, squares is equal to new square. And then we're just going to throw an 8 and 8 uh, because the board, board length and board size is fixed. OK, now I'm just going to say create a constructor. And we're going to say public board. And then inside, this is where it gets a little tricky because not only does the chessboard have alternating square colors horizontally, but also vertically. So in order to do, in order to implement this, we're going to say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than board squares dot length, i plus plus, and then we're going to say int column. So int current column is equal to zero. And then we're going to say square color, current color is equal to, oops, let's import that, uh, i mod 2 is equal to 0. So if the square is even, then we're just going to say square color dot light, otherwise square color dot dark. All right. And then for file in file, uh, whoops. Yeah, file, file, in file.values. So for each uh, file name, we're just going to create a new square. So we're going to say square, new square, is equal to new square of current color, and then new location of file and i. All right. And then we're just going to say board squares of i and column is going to be equal to that new square. And then we need to flip the current color. I'm going to say if current color is equal to square color dot dark, then we set it to square color dot light, otherwise square color dot dark. All right? And then we're just going to increment the column. I'm going to say column plus plus. All right. So then outside of the constructor, we're going to create a method called print board. So now uh, we're just going to have create a new package called runner. And then we're just going to create a new class whoops, called uh, game. And then inside of the game, we're just going to create a main method. And we're just going to instantiate a board. Board board equals new board. And we're going to run this, and we're going to say board dot print board. All right. Okay. So we see some output here, and we see that the square color, the leftmost square color, is dark, and then we have a location as the memory address of location, and then is occupied is false, and then we have another square that's light, 
and so on. So it looks like we're properly alternating between light and dark, both horizontally and vertically, which is great. Now, uh, let's actually add uh, a two string for location, so that way we're not printing out um, the uh, memory address. Okay, so we just ran our code, and we see that we printed out uh, the file and the rank of each square, of each location. But we see that file A rank zero is a light square. That's actually not true. It's actually a dark square on a chessboard. So we have a little bit of a bug. So what basically is happening is the way we're creating this, uh, this um, array or this board is from the top down. So what that means is we actually just need to flip the numbers and then we'll actually have the correct orientation of the chessboard, right? Okay, so the way we do this is we create a, a, a static variable, private static final integer board, board length, and we're gonna set that equal to eight. And then we're just gonna set that board length as the array size as well. All right, and then inside where we create these locations, it's just gonna be board length minus i. So what that will do is it'll flip this value zero and make it a seven, and then it'll make this value down here a zero. So when we run this again, we see that, first of all, it made it one through eight, which is correct. So we have A1 is now a dark square, which is the equivalent of A0 in our previous uh, implementation. All right, so this is the correct orientation of a chessboard. Okay, so I hope that gives you a pretty good introduction into our chess program. Um, and so far we've created a board class that is the composition of an array of squares. And then squares are, contain not only a square color, but also a location. And then inside of a location, we have the rank and the file, okay? So just think about object, and this is what we call a, a class hierarchy, right? Um, and we wanna actually take this with us going forward when we start to implement some more uh, complex um, uh, trees of class hierarchy because we have to think of it from the bottom up. Like what's the most, what's the simplest component within a chess board or a chess piece or uh, what's the baseline functionality that we expect all pieces to have or the board to have and so on. And then we can build on top of those base, that base foundation, right? So that's kind of how we use object-oriented programming to develop software in an efficient way in a reusable and maintainable way. Okay, and so in the next video, we're going to start to touch on uh, in, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance when we start to create uh, the pieces that will go onto this board, um, and we'll actually also start to look at a little bit of composition. All right, so if you like the video, please feel free to uh, like, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on the next part of this series. Thanks.